because the church goes beyond the preacher. The church goes beyond the choir. The church goes beyond the position. The church is all about Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I also want to share with you this, a very important announcement. As we seek to expand what it is we do here at Messiah, um, I am aware that some of you are watching this uh, and you have no church affiliation. And we want to let you know that we are here for you. So um, we, we've come up with, with an idea and I pray that you'll be blessed by it. If you'd like more information about our church, if you'd like to accept Jesus Christ as your savior, um, or maybe you're just looking for someone from the church to pray with you. Um, we want to connect with you. And so we have an email address on this slide at the bottom of the screen. It says Messiah Movement Connect at gmail.com. That's Messiah Movement Connect. That's all together at gmail.com. If you would email your name and your telephone number to that email address, someone within the next 36 hours will reach out to you. Because oftentimes at the conclusion of the message, we, um, it's customary. And when we're in the building called Messiah, we would open up the doors of the church. And we want to have this worship service, this virtual worship service, just as meaningful and as impactful as we do when we're in the building. And so I want to offer someone, if, if after you've listened to this message and you feel God speaking to you and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, simply email your information. Uh, to Messiah Movement Connect, and someone from the church will get back to you. Um, they will welcome you. They will pray with you and invite you to become a member of the body of Christ. This is all about the kingdom of God. It really isn't about Messiah. But if you'd like for Messiah to be your home church, we'd love to have you. As I share on Sunday mornings in the church, we're not a perfect church, but we're striving each day to draw closer and closer to Christ, and we are on the move for Christ. And so we're praying for you, my brothers and sisters, whoever you are, wherever you might be watching, you can connect up with Jesus. You can become saved, yes, even through the computer, even through your cell phone, because we understand that God is not a respecter of buildings or, or technology. It's all about the heart. And so if you'd like more information about that, please simply email Messiah Movement Connect with your name, uh, your telephone number information, and someone will reach out to you. And then also, if you just like for someone from the church, one of our ministers or prayer warriors to pray with you, simply um, email your information as well. And one of our leaders in our prayer ministry will reach out to you and have personal prayer with you. Amen. Listen, we are growing this thing. God is growing this thing. That's what it is. God is growing this thing. And we pray that you are blessed by it. Amen. Listen, I'm so excited this morning. Uh, Sister Jocelyn Brown is here with us and she's going to um, bless us with the selection. Uh, Jocelyn, if you on, let me see if I can get you going. Amen. Amen. Let me see. There she is. I see her right now. All right. We're going to spotlight you and allow you to bless us. Amen. God bless you. Okay. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Amazing grace, how sweet. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see that God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, oh, God has smiled on me. He's 
been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, So good, he's been good, so good, he's been good to me. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, I know it's virtual, but we can still give God a hand of praise for Sister Jocelyn Brown. Thank you, Jocelyn. God You're bless you for that virtual selection. Amen. You sound just as good virtual as you do in the church. And so we uh -oh. thank God for you and your gifts. Amen. Thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters, as we prepare to um, hear a word from the Lord, I would just ask that you bow your heads. Um, let's just go to God in prayer um, as we seek to hear from the Lord. Amen. God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for allowing us to gather together um, from, from different residences, from different places, but we are connected by the blood. First and foremost, we're connected by the blood, the blood that your son Jesus died and shed on the cross at Calvary. God, I thank you for everyone who has logged in. I thank you for everyone viewing right now. Thank you for everyone who will view in the future. I pray, dear God, that this message will be a blessing to them. God, I just ask that you use me. Um, use me for your glory. Use me that, that I might be able to share what it is you've already shared with me. And then I pray, dear God, that we will be able to walk in the boldness and the confidence of knowing who we are, knowing that we are your child and you have a purpose for our lives. And so, God, we thank you. Um, lastly, dear God, I just want to say again, thank you for all of our mothers. Thank you for those persons who sacrificed, um, who, who, who paid the price, those who, who did everything that they could in order that we might become who we are right now. Thank you, dear God, for the mothers. Bless and keep them, Lord. Now bless this word, bless this service. And if there's anyone that doesn't have a relationship with you, I pray that at the conclusion of this service, you place it upon their hearts, Lord, um, to, to connect up with that Gmail account, Messiah Movement Connect. Allow them to reach out to someone so that they might discover you and discover life brand new. Bless now this word, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. My brothers and sisters, there's a word I wanna share with you. Um, it's found in the Gospel of John. I've been in John lately, don't know why, but I was led um, to John uh, this week. And um, it's John chapter two. I wanted to, to uh, speak not only to the mothers, but I wanted to speak to you personally. Yes, you, I wanted to speak to you personally. John chapter two, verses one through five, I'll be reading from the message translation, but in your own time, um, read chapters one and two together. Read them together in your Bible study time this week, and I pray and I believe that you will be blessed. But this morning for the message, I wanna to read to you John chapter two, verses one through five from the message translation, and it reads this way. Three days later, there was a wedding in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus's mother was there. Jesus and his disciples were guests also. And when they started running low on wine at the wedding banquet, Jesus's mother told him, they're just about out of wine. Verse four, Jesus said, is that any of our business mother, yours or mine? This isn't my time don't push me. Verse five, she went ahead anyway, telling the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Amen. I want to focus in on verses four, verses four and five. Verse four says, Jesus said, is that any of our business, mother, yours or mine? This isn't my time. Don't push me. I like that translation. Don't push me. And verse five says, she went ahead anyway, telling the servants, Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I wanna share with you from this subject, there's greatness inside of you. 
Yes, there's greatness inside of you. Touch yourself and say, there's greatness inside of me. Amen. Kiera, Kiera Kiki Shear is the granddaughter of the late gospel icon, Maddie Moss Clark. And just recently, um, Kiera has been in the news for the accomplishments that she's making, both as a gospel artist, but also as an actress. At the conclusion of April going into May, um, Kiki Shear held the number one gospel album in the country. Along with that, just the second weekend in April, she co-starred with others in a bio picture story about her mother and her sisters entitled The Clark Sisters. Uh, throughout, throughout the movie, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, ain't nothing else to do but watch stuff. And so you've seen the story of not only The Clark Sisters, but more importantly, Maddie Moss Clark. And so as I was reading about the accomplishments of Kiki Sheard and what she's doing and how she's perched atop the billboard charts and, and she's a, a, a blossoming actress, I couldn't help but think about her beginnings. Well, actually her mother's beginnings and how her mother was, was, was able to discover her greatness because of a mother she had. I, I won't forget, the movie was, was very entertaining and blessed my spirit, but there was a part in the movie, y'all know what I'm talking about, as Maddie Moss Clark is preparing to direct her choir, there's a young lady over to the right who's chewing gum. Her daughter, Dorinda, is talking to a boy. And all in one fell swoop, Maddie takes off that shoe and throws it because the Sopranos were off key. And from that moment on, throughout the story, you saw where Maddie Moss continued to push. Maddie Moss Clark continued to push her daughters to greatness. Listen, she wasn't concerned about what other choirs could do or what other singers could do. She let her children know that they were great, that God had blessed them with a gift. And it was her responsibility to not only cultivate it, but to bring it out of them. And so um, one of her daughters, who she considered the best singer of the group, Karen Clark Shear, went on to have her own great gospel career and then gave birth to, yes, Kiera Kiki Shear. And so Kiki Shear is who she is because of a mother who was raised by a mother who pushed her for greatness. And my brothers and sisters, I, I, I wanna share with you today that there is greatness inside of you. All of us have greatness inside of us. And that's the reason why I selected this text for this morning because um, this for me is the beginning of the discovery of Jesus's greatness. Listen, the Gospel of John is different than the other Gospels because we really don't have too much information about the birth of Christ and his early childhood and formative years. Actually, John introduces us to a grown-up Jesus. Um, Jesus is, 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 is being celebrated by John the Baptist. John the Baptist bears witness that he is the one. He is the Messiah. The Gospel writer John also shows how, how Jesus got his early disciples. Andrew and Peter, Philip and Nathaniel. And, and as soon as chapter one ends, chapter two begins with, with the setting taking place at a wedding ceremony. Now you need to know that it's customary or it was customary for the Jewish culture to have wedding ceremonies that would last well into a week. So it wasn't just a one day thing that you all plan. You know how we plan, we plan the wedding, then we go to the reception and we dance and party at the reception, but then that's it. No, they celebrated for seven whole days. Yeah, they took it to a whole nother level. And John records that Mary is there, who is the mother of Jesus, along with Jesus, along with his disciples. And verse four says that Mary becomes aware that the couple, that the host are running out of wine. And she goes to Jesus and says, hey, Listen, um, they're running out of wine. Now, depending upon what translation you read, um, in some translations it reads that Jesus and his tone was kind of curt with her, kind of rude to her, like woman, what, what concern is that is mine? But the message translation gives it a different angle. The message translation uh, basically has Jesus saying to his mother, mom, that, that ain't none of our business. That, that ain't none of our business, mom. We, we're here for the reception, that ain't none of our business. But, but the mother understood that 
if the couple ran out of wine, it would actually show a sign or a lack of planning by the couple who got married. You see, the people came and the responsibility of the couple was for them to have enough. Oh my gosh. And so Mary understood, I can't allow this new couple to start off this way, being embarrassed by not having enough. And Jesus, I'm asking you to make up the difference. Can I stop right here? I get excited, I'm sorry. But can I stop and let you know that whenever you are lacking and whenever you feel like you're about to run out, guess what? You can call on somebody who can make up the difference. This ain't even part of my preaching point, but I just had to give it to you for free. That when you find yourself running on empty, when you find yourself down to your last dime or down to your last hope, just call on Jesus. He specializes in making a way out of no way. Is there anybody watching by this virtual service that can at least throw one hand up and say, I know you right preacher, Jesus can make a way out of no way. What I love about this text is that Jesus says in the translation, the message translation, he says, my time hasn't come yet. And then he tells her, don't push me. Don't, don't, don't push me. There, there was a relationship between Mary and Jesus that's playing out and Jesus is basically saying, mom, leave it alone. Don't push me. But you know mothers. And that's why we're doing this on Mother's Day because mothers just have a way of pushing. And she tells the servants, she don't speak anymore to Jesus. She tells the servants, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Now listen, if this is your first time ever hearing this story, I apologize because this is a spoiler alert. Uh, Jesus does turn water into wine. That, that does happen beginning at verse six. But I wanted to focus on this, this dialogue, this brief dialogue between Mary and Jesus and, and, and Mary actually pulling out the greatness of Jesus. We begin to discover how great Jesus is, what Jesus is capable of doing because of his mother. Just as the Clark sisters were able to be gospel royalty, Maddie Moss Clark had to pull that greatness out. And, and Mary, in some strange way, is pulling this greatness out of Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, I'm just here on this, on this message this morning to share with you that there is greatness inside of you. But you just can't have greatness inside of you lying dormant. You got to do something with it. And so my brothers and sisters, as we become great, I want you to, I want to share with you just a few steps in becoming great and discovering your greatness. The first point is, I want to share with you, um, you can become great or your greatness lies when you understand where you've come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you know who you are and where you've come from, you know that you are great. Um, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, um, received word I read about the deaths of, of two musical icons, um, different eras, but impactful nonetheless. Um, early morning, I woke up and saw that little Richard had passed. And many of you, some of y'all older members, y'all grew up dancing at Tutti Frutti and all that stuff. But then there was another person who died that probably some of you didn't know, but it impacted me. Andre Harrell is his name. Andre Harrell, um, Andre Harrell, for our generation, for my generation, is what Barry Gordy was to the baby boomers. Andre Harrell ran Uptown Records, and Uptown Records actually reached its peak and its height by the time I was leaving out of high school, 1986, and into my college years. As I was becoming an adult, Uptown Records and the music that they produced was actually the soundtrack to my life. Listen, listen, Uptown Records and Andre Harrell, he ran Uptown Records. Um, he, he, he was underneath uh, uh, Russell Simmons and, and, and he had his own record label, Uptown Records. And from Uptown, um, we had Heavy D and the Boys. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Um, we, we had Father MC. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. We had Guy, Teddy Riley. Uh, I'll be sure that, I, listen, I can't tell you the number of songs that I played over and over again because of Andre Harrell. Listen, because of Andre Harrell, Andre helped to mentor Sean Puffy Combs. And we know that Sean Puffy Combs helped to discover Mary J. Blige, yes, and Christopher 
B.I.G., notorious B.I.G. Wallace. Where would we be without some of those great songs? And it's all because of Andre Harrell. So Andre Harrell passed away. And I was reading about his bio yesterday and just, just discovering things about his life. Everyone who spoke of Andre Harrell spoke of his black excellence. They said wherever Andre went, he represented his blackness. Boardroom or dance floor, whether it's a record company or whether it's a sound room, Andre Harrell let everybody know that he was black and he was proud of his blackness. He dressed in an elegant manner. And the question would always say, they would always ask Andre, why are you always talking about your blackness? Why are you always talking about who you are? He said, because I know where I've come from. And regardless of where I am, I want you all to know that I'm not ashamed of where I've come from. My brothers and sisters, listen, I do believe that there's greatness inside of you because of where you've come from. Our history is built on greatness. We are people who are all about greatness. And even if the American history books has not written about all of our greatness, we as a people know who we've come from. We've come from kings and queens. We've come from doctors and lawyers and school teachers. We've come from barbers and beauticians. We come from a great people. There is greatness inside of us. And I want to make sure that we not only understand it, but that we share it with the future generation, those young persons who are coming up and discovering maturity and adulthood, that they know who they are, that they know that within their blood lies greatness. They come from a line filled with folk who paid a price, folk who were educated, folk who knew what it meant to be an American, but also an African-American. We come from greatness. And I do believe that Jesus was able to discover his greatness because he had a mother who helped him discover his greatness. She wanted him to understand you ain't no ordinary child. There's some special things that you can do. And as Jesus grew slowly into his teenage years, into adulthood, he discovered his greatness. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that there is greatness inside of you because of where you've come from. Let the church say amen. Also, also, there is greatness inside of you and you are able to reach that greatness by sometimes receiving an uncomfortable push. Yeah, I'm great because of where I've come from, but I'm also great because every now and then I got pushed, an uncomfortable push. That's what Jesus says in the text. Um, he says, um, uh, mother, woman, don't push me. My time has not yet come. But in verse five, she tells the servants, um, do what he tells you to do. If that ain't a black mama, I don't know what it is. How, how many of y'all had some parents that pushed you? That you, you, you wanted to be left alone, but they pushed you anyhow? Yeah, a gentle, but yet uncomfortable push. Jesus says, I ain't ready to do this yet. But Mary says, oh, but you're going to do it anyhow. You know what I discovered? And if, if, if I lose it right now, y'all just forgive me. But as I was reading this text, I discovered just for the very first time this week that Mary is able to give Jesus an uncomfortable push because she too received an uncomfortable push. This is actually greatness talking to greatness. I'm about to lose it, but I'm gonna keep it together. This is greatness talking to greatness. She knows what Jesus is capable of doing, what he can do, but he says, my time ain't come yet. Can I use my, my, my mama voice, my black mama voice? As, as he's saying this at the wedding reception, this ain't in the Bible, but this is Orange translation. I hear her saying, oh, you feel like you ain't ready yet? Well, I wasn't ready either, son. I was just a 13 to 14 year old young woman engaged to somebody that was gonna be my husband. But Gabriel, an angel showed up one night and told me that I was about to be a mother. And I told Gabriel, that's the plan. I do plan on being a mother when I marry Joseph. But Gabriel said, no, Mary, this ain't about your plans with Joseph. This is about God's plans with you. And so instead of Mary being able to wait until it was comfortable, the angel said, no, we're going to get on with God's business right now. So I see Mary saying to Jesus, oh, you ain't the only one who's ever been pushed. 
But I've discovered, this is Mary talking, but I've discovered that with God, all things are possible and God can do anything but fail. So Jesus, I know you ain't feeling it right now. And I know you want to take a chill pill on performing this miracle, but I need you to do it right now. She gives him a gentle push to anyone, anyone, anyone who knows me, anyone who's ever worked with me. Listen, they will share with you that I push people. I, I, I laughed to myself last night and this morning because anyone who has ever worked with me, they will, they will wave their hand and be like, he pushes too hard. Listen, starting when I was a youth minister at College Hill Presbyterian Church, there were two high school students that I pushed. Ashley Williams and Daryl Brown, they'll tell you, I pushed. I pushed them, pushed them so that they might become greater. If Reverend Martika McGuire was here with us and she might be watching my live stream, she'll tell you, he pushes. He pushes. There are ministers right now at Messiah that'll tell you, yeah, he pushes. He pushes. Listen, Mrs. Owens, who's right next door, will tell you, yeah, he pushes. Anybody who knows me knows that I push. I push people for greatness. But what you don't understand is that I was raised being pushed myself, being raised by a mother and a grandmother who saw greatness in me. And instead of them allowing me to remain comfortable and complacent with my greatness, no, nah, they said, you are different and we gonna push you to see what God can do with you. I'm not everything I wanna be, but I thank God I ain't what, used to, what I used to be. And I thank God that I had somebody to push that out of me. And so to those of you who are watching, I need you to know it's not about Mary pushing Jesus. It's not about me pushing ministers. It's not about your parents pushing you, but this is actually God pushing the greatness out of you. I need you to know that it won't always be comfortable, but God says to us, if I let allow you to stay right where you are, you're going to stay right where you are. If I allow you to talk about your faith, but never exercise your faith, you're going to stay right where you are. So every now and then, God has to give us an uncomfortable push, a push out of the nest, a push out of the job, a push out of the relationship, a push out of things that we've grown comfortable with so that we can see if we trust God, all things are possible. If I was in the church, I asked the question right now, is there anybody here that has ever been pushed by God? Have you been pushed and you didn't want to be pushed, but after you were pushed and you discovered the greatness that was inside of you, you can't help but to thank God for being pushed. How about right now we give God a thank you, Lord, for pushing me, praise. Thank you for pushing me when I didn't feel like going. Thank you for pushing me when I wanted to stay right where I was. Thank you for pushing me forward when I wanted to go back in reverse. Jesus said, don't push me, mama. Mary said, do what he tells you to do. And thanks be to God that this becomes the first miracle that Jesus performed. If you want to become great, know who you are. Know where you come from. You want to become great? Every now and then greatness will require an uncomfortable push. But also, lastly, if you want to be great, do what you can do. Just do what you can do. Just do what you can do to the glory of God. Listen, um, writers have suggested that, um, writers have suggested that Mary, we know Mary had other children, but they suggested that quite possibly the children, her other children were at this wedding reception. But yet and still she asked Jesus to do it because Jesus was the only one who could do it. Listen, I need you to know that the greatness that lies inside of you is a greatness that can be a blessing to others. And our greatness comes in different forms. Listen, there are millions of school teachers, but there's only one teacher like you. There are millions of singers, but there's only one singer like you. How many ushers we got in our churches? How many ushers we got in the world? But there's only one that can do it your way. Listen, regardless of how many people exist, there's only one. There's only one who can do it to the level that you can do it. And the challenge is for you this day moving forward is how will you do it? How will you accomplish it? How will you reach your greatness? 
You can only do it by exercising. You can only do it by giving it to God and allowing God to work a miracle in your life. My brothers and sisters, as we look at the text, after Mary pushes Jesus, Jesus is able to do what nobody else could do. He turned water into wine. He gave up who he was unto God and God blessed him by performing these miracles. I believe it's Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who in one of his speeches um, shared the words of wisdom from a, a college president. College president was sharing that um, all of us will have different lots in life. And if your lot just happens to be a street sweeper, you need to sweep them streets to the glory of God. Sweep the streets in a manner that nobody in the grave and nobody that will be born will be able to outsweep you in them streets. King went on to say, sweep the streets like Michelangelo painted. Sweep the streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep the streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Do it to the glory of God and to the best of your abilities. Then and only then can you discover the greatness that's inside of you. Let's wrap it up. Um, listen, it was a miracle that Jesus turned water into wine. That was great. Um, it was great that he healed um, the royal official son. That was great. It was great that he walked on water. It was great that he healed the paralyzed man. It was great that he fed the 5,000. It was great that he raised Lazarus from the dead. It was great that he caught or was able to catch a huge school of fish, 153 large fish found in John chapter 21. All of those things were great. But the truth is, um, other people could have performed some of those things. But there's only one thing. <laughs> there's only one thing that makes him great. And the greatness inside of him took place on a hill called Calvary. On one Friday, he died. Now I need you to know, there's a whole lot of folk who have died and all of us will soon die, but there's only one who was born to die. I know, I know Notorious B.I.G. said it uh, in his CD, uh, born to die, but there was only one who was able to die for all of our sins. And the greatness inside of him came out on that cross on Friday. But the greatness was continued because early Sunday morning, he came out of the grave. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you've been blessed by this message. Listen, there is greatness inside of you. When you know where you've come from, there's greatness inside of you. When you understand that every now and then God will give you an uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable push, God is just bringing out the greatness inside of you. And when you do what the best you can do, not about what somebody else is doing, not about how somebody else is sounding, but I'm doing what I'm doing to the glory of God, I am great. I am great not because I'm a preacher. I'm great not because I'm a pastor. I'm great not because I'm a son or a husband or a friend. I'm great because there is Jesus inside of me. And that greatness comes out each and every day. I can't take credit for it, for whatever it is I'm able to do. And however it is I'm able to do it, God gets the glory. But from now until the day I die, I wanna challenge you to be great. Be great in your studies. Be great in your service. Be great in your employment. Be great in raising children. Be great in giving wisdom and allow God to get the glory from your greatness. To God be the glory for every great person watching this live stream this morning. May God continue to bless you and keep you and pull out your greatness. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise this morning. There is greatness inside of you. Listen, before we close, I, I simply want to have a prayer. There might be someone seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ. I just want to pray for you. At the conclusion of this live stream message, simply go to messiahmovementconnect at gmail.com. If, if there's a prayer request, type your prayer request in. Someone will get back to you. If someone wants to just become saved, I want to give my life to Christ. 
You can do it that way. If someone wants to become a member of our church, yes, even a virtual member, we'll be happy to welcome you into the family. Let's pray. Let's just pray right now, and then we'll be done with this service for today. God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for greatness. Thank you, God, for being great. Thank you for creating this world in six days and resting on the seventh. Thank you, God, for creating um, all that you've created. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who was great indeed. Yes, he did some great earthly things, but thank you, God, for allowing him to die on the cross to really expose his true greatness. Thank you, Jesus, for coming out of the grave on Sunday morning. Thank you for that greatness, and thank you for everyone who's watching right now. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every person is able to discover who they are, discover their greatness. I pray, dear God, that you surround them with people who will help them become great, become great in your sight, become great in faith. God, there's someone here that doesn't have a relationship with you, and right now they're feeling something. They, they're feeling like they need to give their life up and discover life brand new. God, in the name of Jesus, will you bless them? Will you speak to their heart? You created them so you can communicate in your own way to them, but reach them wherever they are, that they might surrender what they're doing and who they are right now and discover life in Jesus Christ. I'm praying for that person, dear God, who is already saved, but they're looking for a church home. Quite possibly, Lord, they've discovered a virtual home at Messiah Baptist Church. God, if that's your plan, Simply lead them, lead them to do what they need to do so that they can become a part of our ever-growing family. God, someone's at, in need of prayer right now. Will you, will you bless them, God? Will you acknowledge their prayers, God, and allow your will to be done in their prayer requests? God, we ask it in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you for this day of worship. Thank you for the prayers that we've had at 8 a.m. Thank you for our Sunday school lesson that was taught at 9 a.m. And thank you for this service right now. We ask your blessings upon us. And once again, bless all of the mothers. Bless those who are even grieving right now because their mothers or grandmothers aren't here. God, fill that void and let them know that there is still more life to be lived and there is still more wisdom to share with others. Bless us, God. Bless all of our mothers. Keep us in your care until we gather again this coming Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. We give it all to you. We praise you, God. We love you and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I pray that you've been blessed by this service. Remember, there is greatness inside of you. Take care.